I was raised in Massachusetts. I'm the youngest of three children. Um, my father was alcoholic, my mother was alcoholic. Um, so I grew up with a lot of dysfunction, a lot of violence, a lot of fighting, emotional abuse. My dad would hit my mother a lot. You know, um, she would have black eyes, broken ribs, and, and yet she fell down the stairs. You know, we'd always look like the pretty picture getting ready to go to church on Easter, but yet, yet there was so much violence. They brought me to church every Sunday, but I never heard of a loving God. I never heard of Jesus. I, I just heard, if you sin, you're going to go to hell. And that's what I always remembered hearing. And I think it was because of all the fighting at home um, that I learned to escape at an early age. Seventh grade, I think it was, we started um, stealing liquor from the house. I remember drinking, and the first time I ever drank, I loved it because it was an escape. It made me feel numb. I, I didn't feel so sad or so afraid. Every chance I got, I drank. Started doing pills in high school. It started with diet pills. We started snorting cocaine in high school. In nursing school, we did crystal meth to stay up, um, stay up all night and study, you know. I moved to Florida and this escalated for another 10, 14 years. Um, I met my husband and um, I started doing a lot of drugs to the point where I was physically addicted. I was really mad at God because the way my life had turned out, you know, alcoholic father that would have hit my mother, um, abused us emotionally. Um, and then um, when I got married, I, I wanted children and I lost three babies. And to me, that was just such a, you know, like, I had, I had abortions before Kevin. So that was horrible for me to go through that. So then when I lost three pregnancies with my husband, it was like an eye for an eye. It was like God was punishing me. That's what I thought in my head. And I was so upset because I, I, I wanted a baby so bad. And that just made the drinking and drugging escalating because that I had to numb myself. I had to, I didn't want to feel that. I found that when I worked in the hospital, I could work in the recovery room and um, give my patients Tylenol, take their Percocet. I got called into the office and my boss, and I told him, I said, I have a problem. And so of course I got fired, I walked off, got walked off the job. That's when um, I went into rehab. I was willing to go into rehab. We would talk about God in rehab. I was very angry at God. And I said, I, don't need, I, I even said that, I don't want to talk about God, you know. Look at where my, where, my, where my life ended up. When I got out of rehab, I, um, I, I went to AA every day. And there was a friend of mine that um, went to church. And she asked me if I would like to go to church with her. And I was, I was kind of, um, I, I don't know what I was. I, I, I did start to ex bring God back into my life because in the 12 step they talk about God. And I started to hear that God was loving, that God was forgiving. Because I, I didn't hear that. I didn't really know. I, I didn't know about Jesus. I didn't hear that. I didn't learn that growing up. So I told her that I would go if she'd pick me up for church. So she would pick me up every Sunday. And when I went into church, I would hear the praise and worship music. And it, the talking about, the singing, of, just about hearing about how much the Lord loved me and how He died for me and how I'm forgiven no matter what. I needed that in my life so desperately that I would sit there and bawl my eyes out. And something just started to happen. My heart just started softening. I started to like care about other people. You know, I started to want to be more generous. You know, things that only the Lord can do in your heart, you know, that He can He can change the way I think, you know. Like, I didn't want to lie anymore. I didn't want to steal anymore. I wanted to be honest. The fact that I can sit here today no longer craving alcohol and drugs is a miracle that only God can do. Only God can do. Only He can change that hard heart, can change that selfishness, can can make me want to help others. Like, you know, it's funny, not having children, I, I thought, I don't have a purpose. What's my purpose, you know? But today I have a purpose, and that's to tell people that God is real. He, he is the same God. He's the same Jesus in the Bible that healed. He's the same Jesus that heals today. And if you believe in Him and give Him your life, 
there's nothing that you can't do. You know, you can become clean and sober because I'm sitting here today telling you that. I love the kids, I love them. And every Sunday I can work with the children and just love on them. I don't know what homes they're coming from. We don't know that. So I just want to love on them, tell them how amazing they are. I didn't get that encouragement as a child. They need to hear that they're amazing, that they can do anything they want to do. And, and I just love to do that, just to know that they're loved, to tell them they're loved, to hug them. I, I love that. It's just, it's my purpose. <laughs>